Well, the Eagles lost a game that they should have lost. I mean, where are you expecting them to go into Pittsburgh and win? Um, <laughs> and it turns out that game from a week before against the 49ers, well, there isn't too much shine on that game anymore because the Dolphins just whipped the ever-loving piss out of the 49ers yesterday. So that win doesn't even look that impressive, but um, things are at least turning in the right direction, and that's at least all I'll say. I mean, other than the, the direction of Jim Schwartz still keeping his job is in the right direction. Don't, don't get me wrong there, folks. But I, I'm liking Doug Peterson's play calling a bit better. Like, not everything is hitting, but he's not pissing me off as much, and... You know, I'm, I'm wavering on my opinion of saying, like, you know, he needs to hand over the offensive play calling. Um, just the, 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 the two times he went for two-point conversions or they got two-point conversions this week and the week before with the 49ers games were just two very good clutch decisions, especially in the 49ers game. That two-point conversion early on was a, was a huge game changer throughout the pace of the game. I mean... You weren't counting on a, getting a pick six at the end there, but um, that was huge. And and again, with the with the two point conversion yesterday, the Eagles had a chance to take the lead on a touchdown and a field goal. They had that opportunity, and the field goal sailed wide, right, left, whatever your perspective of you're looking at the goalpost. Anyway, um, and I wasn't so mad that they missed that field goal because they would have been up by one point. Because I was just like, there's just way too much time left. But Pittsburgh's going to march right down and get at least a field goal and reclaim the lead. So I don't even, you know, I'm not even going to hold anything against Jake for shanking that kick. Because first of all, it was 54 yards. But, you know, he made too many mistakes early on. But the few bones of contention I have with this game are, I mean... I, I want to say the offensive line should do a better job blocking, but then I look who's on the offensive line, and I'm just like, okay, you're not a complete dumpster fire because <laughs> none of you guys spare Lane Johnson occasionally when you're in the game. We're expecting to start this year. Um, my lotta looks decent. And, uh, anyway, Carson Wentz... <sighs> He had that bad interception, and someone brought it up to me that Ertz gave up on that play, and I, I looked at the play again. I was like, yeah, you know what? Ertz did kind of... I, I I don't know if if Carson had the route wrong in his head, or Ertz didn't care to move on the route, but damn, man. Ertz is just like, oh, I... Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's just, it just throwing it right into the hands of the Pittsburgh defender, and I, I'm getting very tired of Ertz, especially for this guy asking for this team to pay him, like to re-up him and pay him top tier money for tight end. And I hate to break it to you, Ertz, but we got a tight end that's, you know, not as good as you, but is showing a lot of promise in Dallas Goddard. So losing you isn't exactly that big of a loss, especially if it means you're going to clog up cap room. And on top of that, You've been completely irrelevant for the second week in a row. For the second week in a row, Zach Ertz is one of the most irrelevant players on all the offense. Like, there's double backup tight ends off the practice. I mean, backup guards on the practice squad that stepped in that are more relevant to the team than Zach Ertz is. I, again, I don't know if it's it's Carson Wentz's lost confidence in him, confidence in him, or that you know Ertz is just uh, being an attitude problem. Because I know him and Jeff Lurie got in a or not Jeff Lurie, um, Howie Roseman got in a shouting match a couple weeks ago before the start of a game, like in front of players. So it's like, ugh. dude, you could bounce on out of here. We're good without you. I mean, we're good without your one catch a game, Zach. We'll be okay. Um, but. Wentz overall, I thought that was his best game of the season. Um, and you say, oh, it's another two-pick game. The, the last interception of the game was a garbage pick, just a Hail Mary. They had to throw up to try and hope to get something to happen. 
And obviously one of the biggest things to that stands out from this game, I got an, one more bone to pick with this team. I'll get to that in a second. Um, the biggest standout things is obviously this Travis Fulgram, who uh, people outside of Philadelphia, and a lot of people in Philadelphia, like that if you didn't watch the game, you just looked at the box score. You said like, who's, who's the receiving for Phil- Fulgram? 150? Who the hell is Fulgram? And how do you get 150 yards? Who the hell is that? Um, a guy that didn't even get drafted has more. I, I I think I heard he has more reception yards already than JJ Ortega Whiteside has his entire career in two seasons so far. <laughs> like I, I I don't get it. How do you how do you get a guy that looks like? And I said this. I was like, that was the best. Eagle wide receiver game that we saw since T.O. was here 10 years ago. Like, it was more than 10 years ago. What am I saying? Jesus. Time flies when you're mostly not having fun with the Eagles. Anyway, um, but yet, that game was phenomenal. The amount of third and longs he was pulling down, bodying up with a defender right on him. Oh, shit. Please let this... Please let this not be just a one flute game that this guy and Carson Wentz clicked on because that's what you need. You need that because they haven't had that go-to receiver. I know Alshon Jeffrey is kind of a big body up guy, the kind of just, you know, 50-50 ball in the end zone type guy. But man, this, I, I ever seen Alshon get that many third and longs in a single game. Like he was just, Wentz was just throwing up saying, I know Fulgram's going to catch this shit. They're throwing like 20 yards on a third down. So that's promising to see that type of uh, just just that much of a click right away for a guy that Carson Wentz isn't that familiar with because this is a guy, again, who shouldn't even be on the uh, on the roster this year. was brought in because they needed, they needed a body. And he ends up being one of the star receivers right now for the team. He had a big touchdown catch for him earlier on in the season, too. So, you know, it's not like this is Fulgram's first appearance, you know, looking decent for the Eagles. So, oh, here's hoping there's something decent there because the guy's how he's pick, how he picks in the draft. Blow. They blow. Um, it's, I won't hold my breath on Rager either. Anyway. But, but J.J. Arthega Whiteside, why are you even still on the team? Just... Could 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 you and Jim Schwartz just like I don't know get get lost somewhere that you can't find your way back to Philadelphia? Just take a wrong turn in Camden or something. Just, not that I want any harm to come to them, but if they just got lost and couldn't find their way back home till you know March, that would be great. Anyway, um, one other bone that I have to pick with this team is. How does Miles Sanders, in the second offensive possession of the game, bust one loose for 75 yards? Now I'm like, oh, finally, we've got this big, huge 100-yard-plus rushing day for a running back that's going to make the running game feel good. You know, you want to get that solid 120-yard rusher because, you know, when's the last time that happened since, you know, the Eagles were in the suit? Oh, no, I think... um. Uh, Boston Scott had a 100-plus yard game last year, um, you know, the end of the season. But anyways, it's, anyway, I was just hoping to see a nice 120-plus game from a, from a running back because that's when you say, like, you know, yeah, I got, like, a, a fantasy-worthy running back, you know, putting up stats like that. So anyways, this guy busted one for 75 yards in the second possession of the game, and the end of the game, I'm like, I'm, I'm just watching the little game. I'm just like, damn, Sanders isn't isn't doing much. Like he's having trouble. Like he got a, he got another touchdown, you know, from one yard out. And, and like it cuts to the end of the game. I was like, I was like, how many yards does he have? I looked at it. He had a 75 yard touchdown run. By the end of the game, he had 80 total yards. Like. Is Pittsburgh that good at stopping the run, or were you not that good at trying to run? Because I know, I know it was very pass heavy, and I, you know, before looking at the stats, I was like, like, you know, I don't think he got a hundred yards, but I was surprised that he actually fell twenty yards short of that when he had a seventy-five yard run in the second offensive possession of the game. I just, it, it's, it's like you, you found such huge success. Why don't you just keep trying that? I know it's like, well, you don't want to, you know, you're playing from behind. You want to, you know, keep passing the ball. But it's like, 
it's not like they were like 21 points down the whole game. It was like back and forth and uh, right there and right off and right there. Eh, anyway, um, I don't know. Things look promising. And I mean, it's week going into week five now or just coming out of week five and you're a half game out of first place in your division. So you can't be that mad, can you? Which brings me into my segue of the team that is in first place. The Dallas Cowboys who beat the New York football giants. The New York football giants who put up 40, it was like, I looked up 44, 45 points the entire season so far. So in the first four weeks, they put up 44 points. Yesterday, they scored 34 points against Dallas. Solid win, Dallas. Solid win. But obviously the biggest story here and the one thing I want to talk about, sorry, I figured my nose just decides to start running during the middle of this video. Damn cocaine habit. Anyways, um, the, uh, the obvious story is Dak Prescott's injury. And I tweeted out right away when this happened, I said, this is exactly why you see players hold out in preseason, training camp, etc. Because when you're a player that you 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 you've played well enough, you've gotten to the playoffs, won a playoff game, con you won the division more than once under your rookie contract. Is that enough to get paid? Now, you know, people are going to argue you know, he's asking for too much money. He didn't accept the offers that were on the table. He could have just accepted an offer that was on the table and whatnot. But, but my, my, my point is, is anyone that wants to criticize a player for holding out in the preseason, that is exactly why they do it. They're going to say, I don't want to become another Dak Prescott that is now not going to get paid. And when he does come back, he has to have a prove me season. He has to have a prove me season. He's gonna sign. He's gonna sign a one or two year deal on the cheap, and he's gonna have to prove himself to get a big contract now. So I I don't care that he plays for my most hated team. It's 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 a shame to see that happen. It's a shame to see that happen. I'm not gonna laugh and be like, oh, the, the Cowboys now gonna play with a backup quarterback because I mean honestly, Dallas Cowboys have the best backup quarterback in football. Um, and I know a lot of people are saying like. Some people even said to me that I honestly think Dalton's a better quarterback than Dak ever was. I mean, the guy was on track to have a record breaking statistical season. Um, and we'll see if Dalton even can sniff. And see, that's the thing here is we're gonna see. Um, because the, the, the argument will be made for Dak Prescott or not. Because if Andy Dalton has these 400 yard plus performances with this offense because with Andy Dalton you're going to have to rely on throwing the ball more with Dak you have much more option of a threat of taking the ball and running so there's going to be more times where you're going to have to rely on Dalton throwing the ball so in theory Dalton should be passing more yardage per game than what you saw with Dak so we'll see we'll see how good Dak's numbers look out of this because I think people are going to see that, you know, Dak was that one piece that clicked there, that everything clicked together. And let's be real, the end of that game, that was a nice, impressive final drive that got them, that got the Cowboys uh, into field goal range behind the arm of Andy Dalton. But you had two miracle catches by Michael Gallup, um, well, getting the feet in bounds and whatnot. You can't rely on that, man. <laughs> that's that that's crazy. I mean, that that's skill. And and I, I go on the record, even going back as last year, as uh, as um Michael Gallup is the most, w arguably one of the most underrated wide receivers in the game because he loses shine because he plays behind Amari Cooper and Zeke Elliott and Dak Prescott and you know stud offensive linemen and all this other stuff that get the attention. <clears throat> um, you know, when you're the second string wide receiver, you know. He's tend tend to lose a little shine, like I said, but you know it, it. It was just things were clicking, and it was the whole win it for four and stuff like that. 
it's like, how could Dallas not win on that final drive? Like, just there was just too much behind it. But next week is a whole different thing. We'll see how Andy Dalton looks because, again, I've always been, I don't want to say a fan of Dak, but I, I like how he plays the game. And I think he was the right quarterback for that team. And I don't think you're going to see anywhere near as much production from that offense with Andy Dalton. But we'll find out who's right and who's wrong here because Andy Dalton is definitely going to be playing the rest of the season. That's what that, and that's what pisses me off is, um, you know, I, I, and and I and I jest about things when I say like, oh, pay Dak, clog up that cap space, and blah blah blah. Like that's just that's just shit talking, fan rivalry stuff. I never I never disrespected his skill. Um, again, you you don't just accidentally throw four hundred yards in a game. People would be like, oh, he's playing from behind and all that stuff, and blah blah blah. Well, plenty of guys play from behind and don't hit four hundred yards every game. But anyway, um. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Andy Dalton should, again, he's going to have to pass the ball more because you can't rely on Andy Dalton's feet as much as you can rely on Dak Prescott's feet, so he should be passing the ball more. Or maybe Zeke will start blowing up again and they'll have to hand the ball off more to him, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, it just it, it just bugs me that a guy that was on pace to, to put up historic numbers is now not going to get that big huge ass contract cuz no matter who you play for I can respect talent and when you're playing to a greatness level that you deserve to be paid as the greatness justifies um and I just it just it just pisses me off cuz you know as well as anyone else Jerry Jones is going like god damn I was smart as shit not extending his contract woo Stevie, give me a high five. Boom. Yeah, we didn't extend his contract, man. Woo. Yeah, we caught a break there. Like, I, I, I know he, like, really appreciates all his cowboys and all that stuff, but there's a little piece in him that was, like, caught a break there. Yeah. But anyway, it just sucks. And, you know, it, I guess that's the thing that, that the only thing that really pisses me off is that Jerry Jones caught a break on this because he was stubborn with his checkbook. But I digress because people are going to say, and, and, and it's a justifiable point that, you know, well, he turned down money that was, you know, equivalent to Carson Wentz and whatnot. But then I would say, like, well, why shouldn't he ask for more money than Carson Wentz? Because pe people are going to be like, you know, at least he's won a playoff game. He's made the playoffs as many times as Carson Wentz. Like, his agent should be like, what the hell has Carson Wentz ever done in this league? You know? He gets injured all the time. He's never won a playoff game. My guy has. What do you mean you're not going to pay him more than Carson Wentz? Look at his numbers. Carson Wentz hasn't thrown a single game over 350 yards. My guy throws up 400-yard games all the time. So it's like, yeah, I think Dak should get paid more than Carson Wentz. Whether you feel it's justified or not, whether you think it's it's not justified because of the level of talent between the two teams, then whatever. You know, numbers don't lie, as they say. But then you can say point to the win column and that number. But I digress. Anyways, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting because a lot of people are going to be ready to throw Andy Dalton right under the bus. if He doesn't look like old Dak does in the pocket. But we'll see. It's going to be interesting. And the Eagles are a half game out of first place going into week five. And I, I, I'm still panicked that this season is going to end because if there is any sort of other test tomorrow or today, I don't know if they're testing again today, you know, with the Titans, that's the season because they can't lose two games. They can't reschedule two games for one team. And you're already seeing all the mismatch and the flip-flop. And I'm like, we're not even halfway through this season. And, I mean, God forbid they go into that Titans game and then more Titans players show up, like, right after the game, testing positive for COVID, and then several Bills players. And now the Bills have to shut down operations just because they played these guys that weren't following the rules for whatever reason. Anyway, it, this could be a big mess. Whatever comes out of Tennessee, and especially if something happens to Buffalo after they play the Titans, if suddenly, all of a sudden, a couple of their players start getting COVID and more players in Tennessee start testing positive... That's going to be a shit show and that's going to be the end of it. So I'm still, 
I'm still not holding my breath in this season going on much longer. Um, you're already running out of options to reschedule games. And the whole thing of like people are just like, you know, we'll just pause the season for a couple weeks and let everything straighten out. I'm like, well, you're just opening the door for injuries because you, you, you can't just go full throttle to full stop to full throttle again. And that's why you saw so many injuries in the first two weeks because you didn't have a preseason to, to get guys up to par. And I, it's 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 either you play the season out as it's scheduled right now and you flip-flop where you absolutely can, like if you have to make up one team, one game for one team. But now you already have teams that already had their bye, like um, the, the Lions and uh, Packers just had their bye. So now it's like, okay, well, if any, they have a COVID outbreak, they're screwed because they don't even have a bye week to work with now. Anyway, 20 minutes I've talked on long enough. Um, you know, get better, Dak. It, it, you may play for the Cowboys, but I at least respected you as a talented quarterback. And um, we'll see what that team does without you. And the Eagles, I would push officially put them in the, the uptick column because, man, they were arcing down, going into a pit of misery. But phew, the suck-ass division is keeping them alive. And damn, Giants. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't have la and I, I said that too, I, I tweeted out that I, I wouldn't laugh at the Cowboys if they lost given the circumstances, but damn, you're just a snake bit franchise. Holy shiatsu. Have a good day, everyone. That is all.